All right, students, so today in class, we saw how a motor can function as a generator and a generator can function as a motor. So there are energy conversions happening in both of those. And I'd like for us to summarize in your concept catalog. So have that out, have it ready, and let's define motor. So a motor is the device that converts um, the electrical potential energy into what form of energy? Mechanical. Specifically, uh, kinetic energy. As opposed to a generator, which is going to be converting mechanical energy. Uh, let's try that again here. It converts mechanical energy into um, and when we say mechanical, we can think kinetic into electrical potential energy. So um, same device, but functioning in two different ways. Now here's one important concept. Whenever you have energy converting from one form into another form, you almost always have the generation of thermal energy. Some of that energy gets transformed into thermal energy. And we saw that in our demonstration, that when we turned the generator crank 10 times, the motor on the other end only turned 7 or 8 times. So if it only turned 7 times, we can say that 30% of the energy was converted into thermal energy, which we can see it as waste heat because that energy is just going to go off into the environment. We're not going to be able to use it again for anything useful. Um, so we might add here a little star. Uh, I'm going to do a star like an asterisk. You can do a real star. In all energy conversions, some energy is converted to thermal energy, waste heat. There's only one situation, actually, when we don't worry about that waste heat. And that would be when we are actually trying to convert energy into heat. I'll just give you one example. If you're in the store, you might see a space heater, maybe at Osh or Home Depot, especially this time of year when people are trying to stay warm. It might say something like 100% efficient. Well, that sounds great, but what makes things inefficient is when you get the generation of thermal energy. But that's what you're trying for in an electric space heater. So it is actually possible to convert 100% of electricity into 100% of um, heat. In other words, you can take a given amount of electric energy and convert all of it into heat. Let's say 100% efficient conversion. But to go the opposite way, where you take some amount of heat and you want to convert it directly into electricity, that's very difficult. For that, you need to use a heat engine. You need to convert that heat into some other form that you can use to make it into electricity. And uh, as you know from our unit on heat and thermodynamics, usually you can only be about 30% efficient, which means 70% of the heat of the 70% of the heat you're starting with is um, going to be waste heat, and only 30% of that energy will go into electric energy. So the interesting thing about that, though, is when we want to make electric energy, we get almost all of our electric energy from heat. We take some kind of fuel and we burn it. The only example where we are not burning fuel to make electricity is when we have hydroelectric dams, solar panels, or wind generators, wind turbines. So I have a little video I want you to take a look at. And that video is, uh, should be shown there in EDU. It's about five minutes long, and it takes us through a little nice cartoon animation about how that process occurs. And I want you to watch it because, as you know, we depend on electricity um, in a big, big way. But we have to be careful about how we're generating it so that we're using it or generating it as efficiently as possible. I should say generating and transmitting it to our homes as efficiently as possible. Okay, um, after you watch the video, check my other video where I'm going to do a little review of the FET Generator Lab.